Alright guys, welcome back to another episode, or tutorial I guess, for M Crater. So, today we're going to be covering Thirst Bars, uh, something that's highly recommended. And, uh, what is down here? Okay, just kind of like a cave. But, uh, as you can see on the top of the screen there, we have a, um, kind of like a indicator that we have so many, uh bars left of actual fluid so basically as we run around and do stuff uh, what, what it will do is it will start draining uh, by halves so very similar to the health bar and we'll just keep running around until it does that it takes a little bit long I, I set it to kind of be a more of a balanced number so it wouldn't be too overpowered but as you can see it's now half a bar so um, that will happen ever so many ticks, it will actually remove it. Now to get it back, uh, we have just a custom item. So if we were to fill this up in something like a lake or something, let's go find some water source and head over to the water over here. There should be some, some easy stuff. We just need to basically grab that, and that will give it to us in a water bottle. So we can take a drink. It'll give us one bar of water. And uh, as you would expect, uh, you can basically have different effects. So if you were to get all the way down to a certain point, you could start <clears throat> having some kind of um, effect for status effects or you could deal damage or something like that for the entity now generally real like reality if you drink too much you're going to um not have a really good time uh it's going to be really bad for your body if you drink too much people have died because of that and if you don't drink enough uh, well the same thing happens so uh generally you want to make sure that there's a good balance for liquid so you if, maybe if you go over you might want to make it so it's kind of uh deal some negative effect maybe not exactly damage but it depends on how much you drink and then if it goes down too too far then you would definitely want to deal damage and a few other things but uh yeah it's pretty straightforward stuff and um obviously i made it sound like it's eating but it's not the intended sound that i wanted but yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, now in survival, uh, if we go into survival, slash game mode, survival, oh, that's spectator, survival. Uh, if we go and grab the water here, it should replace our item in our main hand to a water bottle. So as you can see that it just kind of picked it up, put it into a water form, and we should be able to get <laughs> a regular bottle back apparently <laughs> so there's that we'll fix that up in the code while we're reviewing it but uh yeah so there's that and um yeah it's pretty straightforward stuff so let's go into m crater and i'll show you how i did it so i'm not gonna lie there is a lot of conditions uh there are all these conditions for the different uh half and full bars so those will need to be set up in the particular order that you basically have your fluid like your bars themselves we'll cover those in a little bit uh basically though it's pretty straightforward we're just testing for the like for the full ones if it is equal to and greater than a certain value if it's not if it's like a half then we're testing if it's exactly a value of something. So, uh, for example, this is the 19th one, so it's only testing if there's 19th uh, bars. Now, there is a total of 20 bars generally in a thing of health. So your health bars have 20 bars that it can go through, um, even though that it displays only like like 10 hearts it's still there's also the half hearts so this is basically where the 20 comes in because 10 times 2 is 20. um so t if it's equal to or greater than 20 then it's going to be like a full bar of health and when we get down to the next full one what we're doing is we're testing if it's 18 or greater than uh or equal to or greater than 18. so basically 
anything above 18 this will display so that'll make more sense when we actually get into it but um yeah so you're going to need a drinking item uh something to fill your water bottle up this is just a basic item um i think the sound for I'm not sure where the sound is actually to tell you the truth it might be under food properties oh no this one shouldn't have a sound so uh, right click this is where your right click event will basically take place so when you right click on the water what we're doing is we're testing for get fluid as a block and then we're basically testing for a um, water source so basically if it's a water source then we're re replacing the block where the water was with air and then what we're using is the look position of ray tracing so ray tracing allows us to basically connect with water if you're standing in air and it allows you to pick up the water itself so basically what i've done is set it up for a source only and set the distance for 4.5 which is the distance where the player can actually reach at and then what we're doing is we're basically telling the game to only remove the mean hand item uh, so if we have a stack of empty bottles and what we're going to do is only remove that if the player is not in creative mode or spectator mode so basically if they're in adventure or survival this will basically take effect and then lastly we're just adding a water bottle to the um, actual player's inventory so that just basically adds it to a random slot that is available if it's not then it's probably going to drop it on the ground so the player can still pick it up so with that being said that's all there is for that particular item itself uh pretty straightforward stuff and then we have our field one so our field bottle properties uh we wanted to basically set up the animation so i have it set to eat uh, that's fine for now item duration you want to set this to something like 32 or something like that so the entity will basically make it edible and then what you want to do is you want to enable uh the food and then you want to set um i think there's i'm not sure if there is a sound property or something like that maybe it's cut through the animation I'm not sure where because there used to be a setting for that creative inventory so there's that advanced properties yeah I'm not sure where that sound thing went anyhow um yeah so you want to basically set the item as food uh this just basically enables the food item and then you want to set the nutrients and saturation to zero because we don't want to actually give the player any food from this particular item and we want to make sure that it's always edible so basically if we're hungry still like or if our hunger is full and we're thirsty we want to be able to actually drink without having to wait for our food to go down so you want to make sure that is enabled and this is basically the item that you would basically select for it giving it back to the player we want to give it the empty bottle back of our custom bottle Again, it has no inventory and the only procedure that it has is when player finished using item uh, we have basically a script that tests if the value of the thirst so thirst is a global variable uh, found under the the variables tab we have one called thirst and it is a number variable it's player lifetime so we want to basically only run it while the player's alive and then what we want to do is set this the default value to 20. Uh, that will basically set the when the player first starts playing the game it will set the thirst bar to 20 and then we have a thirst timer so same idea number variable player lifetime so we only want it to basically run on the player lifetime and this is going to be the amount of ticks that it will basically delay before it gets um uh depletes the actual uh bar itself so this is set up for i believe um probably about one minute i think i think i set it up for one minute 
So if we set uh, 20 times 60, yeah, so it's one, one minute of um, duration before it depletes one half of bar. So you can configure that as you want. There's 20 ticks in a second, so you can kind of configure that however you want. Uh, the faster it goes, the um, higher chance of it um, basically being a nuisance to the player. Uh, for having to refill it all those times and stuff like that. But back to this, what we're doing is we're basically testing for the thirst. So again, thirst is the actual bar level. And we're testing if it is testing if we can increase the value plus two, if it is equal to or less than uh, 20, because we don't want to go over the 20, not unless you want to actually do the damage for... Um, like if they over drink or something like that, then you would probably want to uh, not worry about this part too much. You probably just set it to a higher number like 30 or something like that. And what that will do is it will allow you to decrease still over time, but only show your full bars. So if you want to do that, you would like deal damage to the player if they're like drink over drink or whatever, then you can set it to like 30 or 25 or something like that. And it would work. Um, as you would need it so basically what it is it's set to equal to or 20 we don't want it to go over the 20 for this particular example and if it is equals 20 or below then what we're doing is we're just increasing that thirst value plus two so it gives us a um a, bo an, a total of one drink um bar of the actual system when we actually uh, drink the water so otherwise if it's not 20 then what we want to do say if it's uh, 19 or something like that then what we want to do is we want to just set the value to 20 again this part is optional if you don't want to kind of do the drink thing you'd probably have to set it up to 30 and then 30 down here if you wanted to do the over drinking thing but um, again, you don't really need to do it. It's just there in place, so it doesn't go over the 20 mark. So that's that part. And then we have a, I believe this one right here, which is a little bit different. Uh, this basically is the script for on player tick update. So basically what this one does is it uh, calculates if the player is moving and if they are either swimming or sprinting. And if they are doing either one of those, then what we're doing is we're testing for the velocity if it's not equal to zero uh, for all three directions. So again, we're testing for the if the entity is swimming or sprinting. And then we're testing if the uh velocity for the entity that's currently having an update tick so in this case a player is um, not zero so if any of these are not zero then what we're going to be doing is running this script here so if it is um, basically this runs then what we want to do is we want to test our thirst timer that's where the thirst timer comes in again thirst timer is the bottom variable so depending on how long you want it to actually drain for this would be the thirst timer where it is and what we're doing is we're basically testing if it's greater than zero so if it's greater than zero we want to decrease the thirst timer by one so this is going to happen every tick uh, that the player is either swimming sprinting or basically running so moving in general so basically if they're not sprinting or moving then down here, basically what happens is if they're moving in any direction, such as jumping, walking, uh, being pushed, whatever, uh, this is basically going to run uh, as separate timer with a little bit different code. So again, that's decreasing it. If it's basically zero, then what we want to do is reset the timer. This value here needs to be the same as your timer value here. Um, again, there is another one down, I think there's one down here somewhere. Yeah, that will be the same timer. So you need to set that up twice. 
And then what we have is we're testing if it's greater than, and then we're just basically subtracting the value again. So basically same thing as up here, uh, just uh, for the thirst timer, so in, or the thirst bar itself. So as you can see, this one says thirst timer, this one says thirst. So we're, we're, we're dropping the thirst when it reaches zero, so equal to or zero um, for, or zero greater than zero. So be, because we're already set the timer to a higher number, it's basically going to run this and when it's after it's finished setting it, and then it's going to basically go ahead and drain the player thirst down by one. So that's basically that. Um, we're only going to be doing that for if the thirst is greater than zero. So the reason we do it for that value is if it reaches zero, we don't want to go any further. Um, this is pretty much straight across the board. Now, same thing happens down here. The only difference is basically our duration for how how fast the thirst timer will actually deplete. So if we're just walking or whatever, what it's going to do is it's just going to decrease uh, 0 0.5 of the timer instead of a full one. So full one is obviously going to be uh, faster for the amount of uh, depletion of the thirst timer compared to 0 0.5. So this is going to take twice as long because 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is one. So it's half of the time. And everything else is the same down here. We're just depleting the thirst bar by one if it's uh, equal to or greater than one. So that's that part. And now we have the GUI to cover. So the GUI is pretty straightforward. Uh, what I have is a bunch of different icons on the side here. These are just items. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see. So we'll start with this one. Uh, as you can see, this is our empty one. And we have basically just an empty icon that is has no actual display condition for where it needs to be displayed or not. So this is always going to show. Uh, you want to make sure that it's not above the bar itself. This is going to interfere with the actual game uh, layout for how the health bar and all the other stuff is set up. So you want to try to use the um, corners at the top or have it go up and down in the bottom corners. Those would work as well. But you want it out of the way where it's not going to actually interfere with the gameplay either. You might even want to make a general display condition where you can enable or disable it uh, through a certain value like a key bind or something like that. But that's not what we're here for. Uh, there is a half icon. This one is set up for a display condition. This one is for display condition one uh, for the half one. So basically if it's half of the um, value of one, so it's going to display that one. And then the full one is full display one. So basically uh, if we drag that, over here you can see that there's like three different icons. This one's always displayed. That one goes over that one and this one goes over this one. Now you want to make sure that you use snapped grid when you actually place these over each other because it's going to make a, your life a lot easier uh, because it needs to be directly over the actual thing, same thing. Now it doesn't really matter what order you put it in uh, because they're only going to be displaying depending on um, if it's a half or a full, depending on which one. So it doesn't really matter too much, but uh, you always want to make sure that your empty ones don't have any display conditions. So that's basically that. Let's go into the conditions again, and I'll just kind of demonstrate the one. So basically this is the half one for uh, the display condition. So again, one is equal to, or thirst is equal to one then it's going to be half a heart. So pretty much any uneven number is going to be a half a heart. And the full one is equal to or greater than two. So if it's greater than two, if it's three, then what we want to do is make sure that the full bar is always displayed. So we're using equal to or greater than two. So that will cover two as well as any value higher than that for the full, full thing. And we're just returning true. And if it fails, if it doesn't um, basically run true, then what we want to do is uh, return false. And what that will do 
is it will just basically not display it at all leaving the empty um, thirst bar icon alone for the remainder of the thing. So again, the thirst bar icons are down here. We have the half, the empty, half, and full, and then our two item icons or item things. There isn't any other assets that I have. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. I'll make sure to provide all the um, <clears throat> conditions, procedures, and stuff like that, as well as the workspace. So you guys can download it and um, use it in your own mods. Um, as one other note, um, you might want to set up uh, other conditions for things like if you wanted to deal damage. Now this would generally be done over um, the entity update tick. I think I didn't save that last time. So basically if it if the player basically deals damage or whatever, like if it gets down to zero, you might want to add a condition. So if it's equal to zero, then what you want to do is have an event that will harm the player. So we could deal one damage and then we could do something like, I don't know, uh, starving or something like that. I'm not sure if there is a starving one. Uh, wither, cactus, starve, yeah, so you would want to add it to starve, and basically what that will do is it will um, damage the entity and give them a starving value. There is uh, another option, you can go in here and then scroll down, I think there's one for custom names as well for damage, not sure where it is, uh, set score, so it might be a little bit higher up. Uh, maybe it's under player. Uh, da, 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 da. Maybe entity, I'm not sure. Um, there used to be one. Deal damage. So this one right here with the localization, you can basically deal damage and then set up a, um, a localization value so basically under localization you would basically create a new value and then in that field what you would basically say is death dot attack dot and then the value that you give it so in this case the default one would be custom so dot custom so if you wanted to add a custom thing and then you would basically under the thing on this value here what you would do is you give the custom death message for when the entity died. So you could basically set it to um, entity, I don't know, like ran out of water or something like that. But that's basically how you would set up the custom messages if you wanted to do it that way as well. So outside of that, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.